Welcome back, everyone. In this final video for lecture 41, I actually want to introduce the root test, which is like the little brother of the ratio test. I say it that way because the three conditions we use for the root test are very similar to that we saw with the ratio test. And in fact, the proof of the ratio test, it, the proof of the root test pretty much always uses the ratio test. So basically, the ratio test can prove everything that the root test can prove. Uh, but there are some situations the root test actually makes to a lead, an easier limit calculation. So we, we do actually want it as an additional test for us. So this time, as the name is going to suggest, the root test, we're going to be looking at the roots of things. So in particular, we're going to look at the sequence. We take the nth root of the absolute value of an. The ratio test, we took the limit of ratios. The root test, we take the limit of roots. And we look at what does that limit, what is the sequence converge to? What's the limit in that situation? Well, if the limit of the root sequence, if that's L and that's greater than one, then that actually gives us an absolute convergent series, just like the ratio test. If the limit of the roots turns out to be greater than one, that actually means the series was divergent. In fact, we could have used the test of divergence to determine that. And if the, the, if the sequence of roots turns out to converge towards the number one, then in that situation, just like the ratio test, it's inconclusive. So let's jump immediately to an example. Um, one example where the root test actually does turn out to be a little bit more effective than the ratio test would be the series where we take n equals one, the sum of n equals one to infinity of the, the sequence 2n plus three over 3n plus two all raised to the nth power. And so while the root test why the root test is a little bit nicer because everything is raised to the nth power right here. Ratios could work right here, but as we have a rational expression raised to an exponent, if you took ratios here, you're going to have fractions inside of fractions. It's going to be quite messy, but the root test is actually super clean in this situation. If you take the nth root of this term, the absolute value of 2n plus 3 over 3n plus 2, all raised to the nth power right here, the, the, the nth root is going to cancel the nth power right here. And we end up with the absolute value of 2n plus 3 over 3n plus 2. And if we take the limit here, because this is a balanced rational function, we have a 2n on top, a 3n on the bottom. This is going to converge towards the limit 2 thirds, taking absolute values there. Now this limit value L, this is the limit of the root sequence. This is less than one. And so this tells us that our series is going to in fact be uh, absolutely convergent by the root test. And so the root test works out really nicely here. Alternatively, if we wanted to use the ratio test, we get two n plus three, sorry, back up a little bit. We're gonna get two n plus one plus three over three n plus one plus two raised to the n plus one power. And this will sit above 2n plus three over 3n plus two to the nth power. And while you can argue that this limit will converge to something L and that L value be less than one, you could use the ratio test to determine that this thing is convergent. You could do that, but if you compare the two side by side, you can see that the root test is a much cleaner argument here. And so it's nice to have the root test as an alternative to the ratio test, especially when you have nice powers that will cancel out with the nth root with that, that comes with the root test here.